What's up, everybody? Excited for this episode of Big Thing. As I mentioned to you guys earlier, the, the show was going to be a little later, not 9 a.m. today, but it is for a good reason, for a great reason. I am so excited once again to be talking to the creators of Cobra Kai, ladies and gentlemen. I know you're excited. I got John Hurwitz, Josh Heald, and Hayden Schlossberg on the show today to talk full spoilers on season four of Cobra Kai. If you have not seen it, what the hell is wrong with you? You got no excuse. It's on Netflix. Get out there watch it i'm pumped here we go ladies and gentlemen it's a big thing i'm gonna stop talking let's get into it all right ladies and gentlemen here we are it is season four spoilers i thought i had a spoiler episode the other day screw that noise i got a real spoiler episode today ladies and gentlemen joining me on the show today the creators of cobra kai John Hurwitz, Josh Heald, and Hayden Schlossberg. Gentlemen, it's been too long. How are you? Hey, good. good. Great to be good. back. Uh, it's great to have you back. All right, let's uh, because I was so I was I was convinced that I was finally going to get you guys back in studio, like when we first did this, and then it's 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 all against us. Everything's against us, but we're getting back. We're getting closer and closer to that. But as a lot of people have told you, I'm sure one of the things during this time over the last um, two years of of shit to be uh, frank has been your show to get you to get people just in a different mindset it's fun it's exciting and i was just talking to, to john I, I brought this up to you before we went on you guys i don't think get enough credit for what you have done in television thus far as you do not do traditional television and what i mean by that is as i've mentioned to you all there is wrestling inside of this. There is Star Wars. There, are, I mean, when I bring up the wrestling, there's babyface turns. Anybody, the heroes of today can be the villains of tomorrow, and vice versa. So, John, when you're you, like, how has this new style of television, because that's what it is, come into play with every season that you write of Cobra Kai? You know, it's it's really just coming naturally. It's not something that we like set out to do in any sort of specific way. You know, we started with the story that we wanted to tell and, you know, have, you know, bring back Johnny and Daniel, bring back, uh, you know, eventually crease. And, you know, now with season four, uh, bringing back silver in a big way, but, you know, you started with the legacy characters and the legacy story and have, uh, you know, Johnny and Daniel teaching these kids. And as you start building out the dojos and you want to, you know, have conflict and drama going on, constantly, uh, you know, from episode to episode, you know, scene to scene, episode to episode, season to season, um, you're, you always want forward momentum. You always want there to be a change. You don't want to be treading water at any right. moment. So that's sort of a, our, our approach in general. And, uh, you know, we're, we're like, we're fans playing in, you know, the, this sandbox that, you know, was built when we were six or seven years old and we still, you know, have, have a, have a blast in there. And we're just, uh, you know, living living in the world. When we're in the writers' room, the three of us and, and our amazing team of writers, we're just having fun. And we're yeah. thinking about where, what do we want to see? What are people expecting? How can we give maybe what people want to see, but in a different way than they would ever ever imagine, or give them what they don't want to see, because eventually it's going to, you know, lead to something more fulfilling later. So that's really just the approach. Yeah, and you know, Hayden, you, the last time when you were on the show, we talked about it. And I actually might have been last time. I think when I when I first interviewed you guys back when I was in Collider, and I, I think that what has been so special about this show was that you can clearly tell. I mean, as John just mentioned, there's a plan. You guys have a plan as far as how many seasons. Like, do you do you feel having a plan and knowing where you're going? Do you, Hayden? Do you know how many seasons you guys have mapped out inside of your head, like an ideal world? Not really, um, because as you create as you continue the show you create new characters you fall in love with different characters and different storylines we do know that um there is a place that we've wanted to go with our main characters from the very beginning yeah. and um and you know there's all sort of practical things that go into play in terms of how long a, a show can go on especially one with you know teenagers in a high school so we're aware of all that um we you know so it's you know, it's the how many seasons was never like 100 percent in our heads. And there's plenty of things that we've done in seasons two, three, four and, and on that we didn't think about from the very beginning. But I will say, like every season, we end up with storylines and things that we don't do. 
that we think, oh, we could do this later. This is how we'll do it later. And so, you know, we still have like a couple of really big, fun, you know, chess piece moves and and big kind of finale ish type things that we've had in store. And we've just finished season five. So the question is, are those like for the last season or not? Or, you know, you know, we're in those discussions because we do feel like this has an end. Um, but at the same time, we enjoy writing the characters so much that, you know, we don't want it to end. Right, <laughs> so, of course. But, there's no, but like as you know, there's possibilities of, you know, spinoffs or prequels and stuff like that. And maybe that's a way to continue the universe beyond, you know, kind of this this initial kind of Cobra Kai story. So I don't know. We, we think about all these things, um, but there's there's always it's le- it's never been about the number of seasons. So it's, it's always been about like this is where we want the characters when it's all said and done. All right, I was going to ask something else, but I got I got to I got to something you just said there too with the spin-offs and all that stuff. People would yell at me if I didn't follow up with that. Is there is that is that something you guys have have talked about? Is that something that is possible to do? You know, obviously once or maybe not once the, the Cobra Kai comes to an end, but is that something that could happen sooner than later? We've been speaking about spin-offs and extensions of the universe ever since we started writing Cobra Kai. You know, we yeah. started talking about it with each other and you know slowly we talked about it with sony and we've talked about it with netflix so these are these are very fluid ongoing discussions you know some of those discussions are deeper than others uh we can't really talk about any of it yet but uh but we can say uh the world is expanding and um and we're we're managing it very carefully well, you just gave me another Christmas present, so thank you so much for that. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things, the reason I love this show so much every time I, I it comes out and I, I reach out to you, and Josh, when we were going back and forth about it, um, as I mentioned, you guys know I'm a big, I'm like a Star Wars junkie, and I see all this stuff in, in season three when it ended, and it's never like clear cut, like who's Vader, who's Palpatine, it's like always kind of like a mix inside of it, and I saw that at the end of season three. But my God, is it present in season four and so much so that you guys made a reference to it with the Anakin stuff. But Terry Silver, to me, is Palpatine. To me, he's the guy that's trained by Plagueis and then overtakes the one to crave the power. Are there people, Josh, inside in, in your writer's room talking Star Wars, going over the, uh, you know, the, these particular references? My God, um, uh, <laughs> from, from day one of the first season, people were talking Star Wars in our writer's room and it was more of a distraction and an annoyance um, <laughs> than it was helpful to the show. And gradually the show's story has caught up to that conversation Love and it. the two have melded um, and they've never been more in lockstep than in season four. And you're, you're exactly right. There are there are so many Star Wars discussions that the, the show just grew into and and we you know the, the amount of times we've talked about you know red eyes and you know a character having that sort of turn um the, the word younglings comes up a lot Love that. um that there are there are and, and the fun of it is that some of our writers room is not well versed in star wars so you really do have a good litmus test for how is this going to play if you're not a deep karate kid fan if you're not a deep star wars fan because we've always wanted cobra kai to be able to stand on its own if yeah. you don't have a deep fan knowledge but if you do it, it you feel the parallels for sure absolutely i'll just, I'll just mm-hmm. say that you know robert mark came in when he wrote that original script there's you know he is a um joseph campbell like you know epic heroes quest storyteller ah, that makes sense. Uh, and, and overlaps i think with george lucas in that sense when you look at the you know the Karate Kid, even though it's uh, you know, it's in the Valley and it's Reseda and Encino, there is this, you know, the the Cobra Kai's are wearing black, you know, like there's there's a little bit of uh, overlap, I think, even built into the uh, original movie. Yeah, I definitely could see that, and I, it was funny. I didn't, I, 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 as much as you guys know, I'm a massive Karate Kid fan. I didn't know the story of came in the fact that he was bullied as a kid and that that's where that, that initial idea came from. And then he combined it with another news article that he had seen. I, I, I was reading up every time I, the show comes out, I do more and more research and I, I, wow, I thought I didn't think I could be more of a Karate Kid fan than I am. Um, and you guys just make that more possible. So, uh, the wrestling side of it, though, I have to ask that, too, because I wrote for WWE for a little bit and there are a lot of parallels. And you guys mentioned it. you mentioned. So I don't know if you guys knew this, but I, I hosted a show at Roddy Piper back in the day and he was a just a wonderful, wonderful human being. Um, but you mentioned him this season and that warmed my heart. Um, but there was also there's so many wrestling, like I mentioned, 
there are things that happen in this show that happen in wrestling. There are these 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 turns of like, okay, this person set up to be the villain, but they see the they see the light, and now they're the good guy. Look at Robbie. Like what happens with Robbie this mm -hmm. season? He's set up as the ultimate villain, but he comes around because of the relationship with his dad. So, are you guys all wrestling fans, or they're wrestler wrestling fans uh, inside? You know, you know, I think it's a little bit more accidental. Uh, okay. Some of what some of what you're seeing there, in the sense of like, all three of us when we were kids loved wrestling. Um, there, you know, maybe a writer or two in the room is like a little bit into wrestling right now, but I think it's, it's, there's just similar sort of story instincts that just happen. I think in the world of wrestling that happen, yeah. uh, when you have, you know, these warring dojos and, you know, characters going back and forth and you're, and you're looking for interesting storytelling. Um, you know, there's a reason why certain things worked in wrestling, uh, yeah. and continue to work in wrestling that happened to also work uh, on our show and, and other uh, types of storytelling. So I, I don't think there's anyone in our room who is a, a regular uh, wrestling viewer these days, although all of us are familiar with it. And we have some characters on the show who are wrestling fans. And we'll, you know, when we have those references, there'll be references that are uni either universal enough where we, where we would know them or enough of the writers in the room would know that reference. Rowdy Rowdy Piper, of course, is a right. legend who we all right. grew up on. Um, so, uh, but it, it, it really isn't an intentional thing where we're like, okay, like he's going to be making the baby face turn. Like none of that stuff is ever really talked about in the room. Well, like you said, just, it just happens to, to work that way because it, it, it plays like the mixture of all of it. And the other side, the other thing is that we're all, all of us here are big eighties movies fans, obviously. And there's ton of that. There's a ton of that feel this movie can, this, this, what this show, excuse me, can be. That's what's so fascinating about it. There are times where it can be so dramatic and and kind of heartbreaking. Like there's that scene where Miguel he, he just wants to be he he wants that father figure in his life, and a lot of that stuff is present throughout this series in general. But that heartbreaking moment when he's there and he finally gets Johnny. Johnny's like accepting him and he calls him Robbie, and it's just like this that that moment. And then you have these funny kind of '80s montages and things that are happening with the. I mean this. The mixture that's got to be is that a hard balance now or as you said earlier that it's just it's kind of second hat at this point you know i we've just found that we you know whatever to, we like different tones we like different things and we're telling a story and you know we we try not to go from something that's absolutely heartbreaking to like stingray right away <laughs> you know like um, you know, we think about our transitions but like we're at this piano and maybe we're in like a jazz mood maybe we're in like a a slow sonata kind of thing and we'll we just keep playing it sometimes we want it to be like dramatic and like get into that star wars place and get into that place and yeah. then sometimes we want it to be just like 80s badass fun and then sometimes you want the sweetness and softness of like a miyagi scene yeah. and you know and we're just kind of surfing on what we think is the right story like you know at the end of season two miguel falls off uh you know and and gets you know paralyzed yeah. and you know the early episodes of season three were like okay how do we find the fun in this but we don't want to force it too much so you know those episodes are a little bit like darker and we just but it gets funny and like yeah. so you know we just kind of go where like the story takes us but our instincts are always you know comedy because that's where we our background is so yeah. it's never going to get too serious but we're not afraid to get too serious and so every episode has something that's very serious and something that's funny and it's finding that like just finding the flow um, well, it's, it's, but it's, it's like, you know, you say they always talk, uh, you know, they, they, we talk on the show all the time about balance. I mean, it's yeah. really, you're not going to find an episode of Cobra Kai that has no comedy in it, you know, and you're not going to find an episode that has, you know, probably no, nothing, no real emotion uh, going on, or, you know, the, we're always tracking relationships on the show. Every scene right. where we're focused on these characters are in the scene. How do they relate to one another? How are they feeling about one another at this exact moment? And sometimes in life, you know, there it's a, uh, it's a barrel of laughs and other times it's tragedy and other times it's, I want to kick this guy's ass, it, you know? <laughs> so, you know, so I think we're, we're, we're always, uh, you know, we're, we're riding the wave and we, we, it's a feel thing. You know, I think, if we did something that felt super jarring um, and felt off, we would all feel it. We'd all be in the editor editing room and be like, okay, that doesn't feel right. Or in the writer's room, when you're reading the script, you would be like, you would feel that there's something off, but we always feel like we're, we're, 
bridging those gaps uh, from, you know, the comedy to the drama. So when you guys are talking about these relationships and and the plan, and I've been asking you, I think, since the first time we started talking about this for season one, is I kept asking, when's Terry Silver coming in? When's Terry Silver coming in? And you guys have, you mentioned him in, in season one, obviously, during that time. How long or did you guys know when you wanted to place him in the series and how long have you been talking to thomas about coming back to reprise the role i i don't think we could say we knew he would start appearing you know as him as his present day adult self in season four i, I can't say that we knew that specifically uh, in a very early season we knew it would take a little while to get there we knew that yeah. whole first season was this reintroduction and this ramp up to crease. And we knew season two was this, you know, celebration of the big bad wolf. And season three was going to be this pick up the pieces and, you know, and bring these guys, you know, onto the same page. Um, so it kind of, the closer we got, the, the closer we came to approaching Terry Silver. And the more we delved into Crease's backstory, it presented us with new opportunities to continue to start telling the story of Terry Silver for people who aren't Karate Kid 3 fanatics. You know, my wife is a huge Karate Kid fan. She's never seen Karate Kid 3. So, you know, we write for people who are at all levels of the fandom or, you know, or who are just Cobra Kai fans who are meeting a new character. Um, so season three really gave us um, that chance to start, you know, seeing, seeing this character, knowing what the importance of this character is as that character relates to John Kreese. Um, and then it was time. And uh, the moment we knew it was time, the moment we knew we had a fourth season, uh, we reached out uh, to Thomas very early. Um, and, you know, right away, he he was like, well, how are you going to make sense of Karate Kid 3? Like, what are we what are we going to do here? Because, you know, he had seen the show and he had he knew the show had a very earnest, very honest tone. Um, and he knew his character was asked in Karate Kid 3 to be this very arch, larger than life um villain and uh and we addressed that with him on in that conversation and we said um that's the biggest thing we've been talking about and you know the, the moment we kind of told him what we were going to do he was like i get it that's great okay like i'm i i see it like let's do this and it, it was a very it was a very engaging conversation he's a writer like us so he really appreciated kind of the 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 dramatic beats and the the steps that would be taken to to peel back the onion and then to put those layers back on um so it was it was just a great conversation that you know became more and more conversations and you know he sent us a video right after we got off that conversation we had said to him you know the the end of the first uh episode you're gonna kind of do this impressive kick um and you're gonna destroy um a bottle of wine on a high shelf um, you know, can, you know, you, you're comfortable with that? And he was like, are you kidding me? And he went outside and just recorded himself kicking something, you know, off the top of a, you know, a heavy bag. And it was, uh, it was a very impressive kick and there was zero training there. You know, he has just, he'd stayed in that kind of shape and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. John, I think you posted that on your Twitter, didn't you? Yeah, no, I posted that on Twitter and yeah, I just remember when he sent that to us, we were all just like, you know, we, we knew beforehand, like, you know, we become friends with Robert Mark Kamen. And when we were talking about Terry Silver, he was just like, he could not have raved more about Thomas. He's awesome. like, he's an amazing actor, but he's an incredible martial artist. He He's the best when it comes to, to all that stuff. So we we knew that he he had the skills. So when yeah. he sent us that video, uh, we just kept playing it over and over again. It was mesmerizing. <laughs> we're like, holy shit. I couldn't stop like, watching. It was one of those things where just, I'm just like, how's he yeah. doing that? Because at first I, did, I was like, wait, did I miss something? I'm like, no, how's he doing that? It's incredible. He just threw it. Yeah, no he wind up. It was just boom. It was yeah. incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So watching him do what he does and Hayden, you know, when you guys are writing, writing him, because I know that you mentioned last time, you keep watching these movies and you can't even imagine how many times you guys have seen the movies over and over again. But do you, oh, because I pick up things obviously when I'm watching it, but I can only imagine what you guys are picking up. And one of the things that I saw at the end was when he opens up all these dojos, so he was going to open them up all over the valley. He threatens Miyagi with that. He threatens Miyagi with that in the dojo. He goes, I'm going to open up uh, Cobra Kai dojos all over the valley. And then he does it. So is that was that, uh, that was obviously intentional, I assume. Yeah, you know, I, I think we're always trying to, uh, our approach has been, you know, people, if if you know who Terry Silver is, and you can be excited about it. And like Josh said, we're, we're not writing to all those 
fans, but we know that they exist and they're they're part of our yes. They're, they're we sometimes talk about you know our segment of evangelicals, you yeah. know, like in, in our in our in the fandom that are uh, that have seen Karate Kid three and they may know that Terry Silver is arch, but they love that aspect of him. Right. And so it's like we don't want to completely neuter that character where it's just going to be like okay. Um, all right, he turned out to be just a really nice guy and and you, and there's no karate fighting for him. And it's just, you know, like we want to give fans kind of what they would want to see from him, but then you have to ground it. And, and you know, so yeah, we, we looked at the, the movie, we saw, okay, this is what he wanted in that. But how do you, how do you make sense out of, you know, his personality in that and his motivations? Because yeah. that was the issue with Karate Kid 3. There's not a lot of motivation on his part other than, you know, he wants to get revenge for his friend but he's going above and beyond right. you know but it's like you know in a christopher nolan style like how how he how he's like took something like batman and that could be silly and was like okay how could somebody actually like decide to get a bat suit and do those types of things we're like you know how could somebody want to terrorize a teenager right. and you know you think about you know Gordon Gecko and uh, Christian Bale and American Psycho. And those are not like ridiculous comedies. They're just like, there was this 80s style guy that was just like chasing life and trying to right, be number right. one. And you know, he's just snorting lines of Coke. And that like just made the character feel real to us. Yes. Um, and so we, and so you'd think like, where's that character present day? Um, and you know, just, okay, maybe he's just like, he's lived this life, but he's like the bank robber who just like, I'm out of the game. I'm right. out of the game. I'm home. And, and crease comes into his life. Like, Hey, let's do one last heist, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and that was our, our, our thing. And like, we just wanted to end it in a place where that old Terry kind of came back. Yeah. Well, he was subdued and it's just like, well, this is Pandora's box. Crease don't, don't do it. You think you think when you're watching, if you, when you rewatch the scene now, you're just like, Oh, you think you're in control, but you're really not. You're, you're, you're mm -hmm. basically letting, you're letting Chucky out. And it's exactly <laughs> what's happening here. Now do you, do you guys know like right away that that's the intention from the second that you bring him in, you know, that we're going to, we're going to toss him off uh, into jail at the end here. Yeah, we we knew our plan when when we were plotting out this season. Uh, that was the goal. It was yeah. you know have Silver be reluctant at first, have Crease lure him in. It's good for a moment, and then you know the pettiness and and issues that the two of them have between one another start to boil over. Crease exerts his dominance. Terry tries to you know prove his loyalty in a misguided way by kicking Johnny's yeah. ass gets sort of like shot down and it's driven, you know, uh, silver's driven kind of crazy and is like, I'm, I'm done with this guy, you know, like he's, he's not, he creases is, is, uh, you know, off the rocker with what he has, or he's not in his, uh, his motivations are not right. aligned with what he says. He's, he's talk. He has this weakness. He has this well, blind it's, spot. It's like, you know, again, you know, we, we, we talked about like the, the, the ex bank robber who's going in for that one last heist, you know, yeah. cause that made the story feel real to us for the, these guys in their seventies. Sure. And it's like finding out along the way that, that this guy bullshitted you and yeah. you, it makes you be like, you know what, I'm going to fuck him over. He'll get arrested. I'll take the money and I'll go off yeah. into this. You know, like that's the yeah. kind of story that we wanted. And now we get like in season five, Terry silver with, with the riches, you know, like, with, with the, with the victory. And yeah. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing is that that's right away. And this is and as I tell you guys when I was saying, to John, I'll, I'll I'll make my predictions where you guys won't answer me at all, which is understandable. This is what I do. And then we go back at the end. It will make sense to me. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it makes sense at the end because I'm going to have people teaching. Barnes got to come back. Barnes has to come back. Now, whether he's Tori's dad or whatever, so I'll leave that up to you guys. <laughs> but but I'm going to I'm gonna keep watching that. But Barnes, the second they said that, and I've seen him doing interviews, this guy wants to come back. He's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> you, you never know. He could be like, you know what? Uh, I, I played that already. You know? You're full of shit, Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> but but we've, we've already filmed, we've, we filmed season five. So I guess we know okay. if he showed up in season five. You do. And you do. Uh, we'll, we'll find out.
I love it. I love it. So um, other stuff, though, too, besides just the, the main character, and Terry Silver, I mean, just was an absolute pleasure to watch. Because as you said, what a phenomenal performance in general by playing that one level of just like, I'm out of the game. I'm done. I'm just he was like comatose almost when he was there. And then by the end, he's that cackling kind of maniac again because he's drinking again. And the fact he threw in the I'm coked out of my mind during the thing. And, and, and you throw that kind of the fact that he is relying on the substance again. But how maniacal he can get, you know, with what he does. Paul Walter Hauser coming back. Showdown competitor, yeah. Paul Walter Hauser, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he comes back. And the way, the way that you used him was that it's it's to say he's coming back to a different Cobra Kai. Um, and I love Paul Walter Hauser, man. I've gotten a chance to know that dude. And, and even when I first started to get to know him, all he did was rave about how much fun Cobra Kai was. He has so much fun doing it. But I guess the same type of question. Stingray always the, the 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 way to get this whole Terry Silver plot, or was it was it any at any time anybody else? It, it's interesting, you know. Stingray, we love the Stingray character. Yeah. Um, we 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 thought about putting a Stingray esque character in season one, and just there was so much story in season one that that didn't feel right. Season two, um, we had seen Paul and I, Tanya. It had to be him. We we created the character around uh paul and um and obviously at the end of you know the second season he had to go off and serve his time um and so there's there's just the fun of the reemergence, as you said of this guy into like i'm back and whoa what happened everything's different where are my friends um you know as we discussed what that kind of um that one-upsmanship was that that tables are turned uh moment for for silver versus crease uh, we, we threw everything at the wall and we wanted to make sure it was something that nobody would see coming and that you really even couldn't predict in the moment if we showed you most of the A side of the moment. And that was the one that we all kind of felt like there's nobody, there's no way anyone's going to look at that moment and say, oh, I know what he's going to do. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, right. it's just played so it's the big bad wolf eating, you know, one of the, one of the three little pigs. Um, I don't know if I'm mixing my, um, my nursery rhymes, but it's, I, it's I was really like, just. I when, when, we, when we shot that, it was like, it felt like Winnie the Pooh walking into, <laughs> you know, like uh, the Buffalo Bills lair. Like, 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, it's, and it's so, it, you feel so sad and bad and, and you're like, oh, it's the wrong time. It's the wrong guy at the wrong place. Yeah. And it just feels like shrapnel. Um, but then to be able to use that character for such a huge plot moment um, was, you know, was just something that we once we landed on it, it was something we we never looked back from. Yeah, it played really, really well. And and because it, it is that little bit of surprise at the end, you just think because it serves its purpose as that first part. He just beats the shit out of him. You're like, oh, he's just lost his mind and not even thinking that when it comes back. Like, oh, that's why he did it. Oh, what a clever son of a bitch. You know, and he just <laughs> continues to do that kind of stuff. And there's so many arcs like that. And there's so many different themes. And I, I will tell you that to me, as I mentioned, that Silver was was my main standout. But the other standout to me in this um, as a character was Tori. Um, because Tori is a character that was always to me so far was, was, was the, the villain girl. She had, she had some layers. There were certainly layers, but you feel for her in this one. Like you're when, when like you understand from everything, she, whether it's the stuff with, with, um, uh, Mrs. LaRusso, if it's it, all, all these things that are happening for her, you kind of root for her over Sam. And I think that was a, that was a ballsy choice. I think by you guys too, because this is Daniel LaRusso's son and daughter and daughter who you're not really rooting for for the majority of this season. Um, was that intentional? Yeah, you know, we're, we're just taking the characters on the on these stories. You know, when it came comes to the character of Tori, you know, she came in in season two. We brought Peyton List in, and she was killing it from so the good. beginning. Yeah. We always worked to have, you know, some light layers to the character, but there's not a lot of real estate with the number of people we have in our cast. But as time has gone on, it, one thing that we did notice by the end of season two was, you know, there was – very quickly a team Sam and team Tory contingent that was like very even. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it probably surprised us. Um, 
just how large the Team Tory contingent was, given what psycho behavior uh, you saw from Tory, especially by the end of season two. Uh, so she's been a character that we've enjoyed working on every year. And yeah, when when um, you know entering the season, we knew that we wanted to get deeper into sort of like who she is, why she is the way she is. You know, last we saw of her, she busted into the LaRusso household. Yeah. And it's like, she just is angry. She's just so angry. So let's learn a little bit more about why she is the way she is. And having that pairing with her and Amanda was something that we thought was a really uh, yeah. big breakthrough that we had uh, when we were writing. Um as Amanda was the, you know, loves her kids more than anything, defends her daughter more than anyone and, you know, wants Tori in jail. And for her to be the one to, you know, see a little bit of herself in Tori as she gets to know her and her circumstances and to sort of build that dynamic. And, you know, when you're heading towards that tournament, um, you know, have uh, have, you know, who is going to win? We're, we're always trying to make it where the audience doesn't know exactly which way we're going to go. Uh, before we landed and we could have gone either way and found fulfilling ways uh, for each of them. But I think Tori as a character, um, weirdly enough, was more balanced um, than Sam had been for a while yeah. in the season, even though Sam right before the, that final match had sort of like come a little bit more into focus with everything. You know, she wasn't exactly herself uh, for a while. And Tori uh, had her eye on the prize and got it done. She did. And or, she or, to... or did she or did she? Or you did know, you, well? You know that's that's true. By the but at the end, but that's and that's another great angle that we're going into. Going, how is she going to deal with it? Is she gonna? Is she going to confront Silver? Is she going to deal with it? Is she going to? Uh, there's so many great questions there, and because of what you said, that balance there, she's trying throughout the whole season. She tells even when she goes into the school, she she tries to make amends with Sam, kind of, and Sam basically tells her go fuck herself, you know. And and it's like that's all of that led up to every single character i think i said this in my spoiler review is that every single character had an angle whether it was daniel's son daniel's daughter kenny was a great um new character also because he's from the second you see him and it, he plays the daniel larusso um angle and this is almost as you're looking at him you're going what if daniel larusso went to the dark side and not just like for three seconds in karate kid three but what if he actually really went to the dark side and that's what happened because this kid who plays kenny man did he did Oh my God! At the end of that scene, I was I was like, that was that, that was that what's is that what got him cast? Was the turn? We you know we, with it, Dallas right? yeah. we we put out. It's kind of like when we cast uh, the role of Hawk. Hawk. We knew that we had yeah. um, a character that had a growth, a, a massive growth in personality, going from you know quiet to completely outgoing. With Kenny, it was finding the right um, you know performer who could go from so relatable oh my gosh what a what a puppy dog of a character i can't yeah. wait you just want to give him a big hug and tell him it's going to be okay to oh my gosh there's a fire <laughs> in his eyes and i don't want to be on the wrong side of him yeah. and um and it was evident from the very first time we saw dallas reed it was it was dallas or bust it was you know it was him he he had it he played it really well because it's just like he he just had enough and especially the way that the like the world is in general with the stuff that's going on with bullying and like, when you when you look at how far can you push somebody and where do they go what like perfect examples my like my father-in-law he went through a lot of shit when he was younger like really like really bad stuff and but he came i became a professor at usc he's got you know he's got two great daughters he's very and and in a way that you looked like he shouldn't have been that way he chose to do, he chose a different path. But then there's people that go through certain things in their lives and they go to that dark place. I mean, that's the dark side and the light side. And to see not only can he go that route, but then for Robbie to recognize it and then Robbie to then go over to his dad and go, what, what am I doing here? Like, what am I, the, the anger and all of that? It just, it, it's not place right. I thought it was a really sweet moment. Everyone's like, well, how's Robbie going to feel? When Johnny's off looking for Miguel, here's and here's my next prediction. <laughs> I think I I believe that Robbie's going to be with Johnny, looking for Miguel. But we'll find out in season five. Um, but either way, so the other thing that I wanted to um, bring up to you guys um, was, I think that John, you were, you were interviewed. I can't remember where it was, and you had mentioned the Miyagi verse and how. Every time you guys do an interview, people ask you whether it's, uh, hey, is Terry Silver coming back? Uh, when when are we going to see Hillary Swank? All that stuff. Because I did see an interview, I think, though, with Hillary Swank because of Netflix. And I'm not going to ask you whether or not she's going to show up because you're not going to tell me. But I'm going to I, I do want to ask the fact that she's 
obviously aware of the show because of her i think her dog's name was was what was it? i saw some interview where they said that her I, her dog's name was kai or something like people kept tweeting at her about it and she was like what what and then she's aware of cobra kai now and because of netflix have you guys ever i mean not not about coming back to the show but have you interacted with hillary swank at all can't even say that at like a coffee shop or something yeah. hey Hillary, how you doing like something like I, that i'll just say as a, as a blanket uh statement yeah uh, we we've interacted with tons of people in and around the original franchise which i count you know the next karate kid as That's one fair. of the original franchise and, and there's actors we've we've spoken with uh who haven't appeared on the show yet who maybe have appeared uh in season five and we haven't told you about it yet or they might appear in a season after that or they never will um you know and <laughs> but but we've got to know everybody and, and you know uh, and have talked to them all you know for, for the purposes of just building out the universe i love that thank you so much um the the <laughs> the the, uh, the other thing though that i that i loved was there was a few things it, and you mentioned it on on twitter where there's reference where so many 80s and 90s references throughout this and a lot of rocky stuff and that's another <laughs> franchise of mine that that is that's it's just i'm i love i've been watching that re-watching that with my with my daughter recently and um there's the sue me for what the the, the duke line but there's yeah. there's a few other references besides just rocky yeah. there was so I don't know if you confirmed this already. I apologize, but when you, my 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 buddy Brad Ernst, I hope we see more of, of Louis soon. Mm -hmm. I hope Louis comes back in. But um, he he introduced his sister, um, who who then is now, is that was that a my cousin Vinny kind of uh, throwback reference? Is 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 that yeah, was well, that a? Know, it was uh, we you know just through making the show, we've gotten to know Ralph and his family and his daughter. And we saw that she was really talented. And, you know, we've talked about like, you know, what, is there something for her, but like, we don't want to force that in. Uh, but we knew that, you know, we, we've also liked leaning into, cause we're, Ita we're not Italian guys. We're, we're from New Jersey and know a lot of Italian guys from New Jersey and like that aspect of LaRusso. And that's what we love about Louis. So we're always into like, you know, leaning more into some of that kind of fun and bringing that a little, the tiny bit of Sopranos, yeah. you know, into, into Cobra Kai. And uh, we thought about that character, um, uh, like a Louis having a sister that would, you know, and it's perfect for Ralph's daughter. And, you know, we talked, uh, you know, but it, we, we wanted something that wasn't just, oh, kind of a fun thing, like, oh, yeah. she's in the show, yay. Like, that's his daughter. Like, we wanted a really fun thing that was meaningful in the episode. And, uh, you know, that was, that was just one of the ideas I remember our writer's room came up with about like, uh, like the Marissa Tomei version, but with child psychology instead yeah. of like, uh, automation. Yeah, that was great. And then it was like, a, there was an outsider's reference in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to make sure that that was, that was clearly mm -hmm. intentional as well. All right, good. I want to make oh, sure yeah. that uh, sometimes I, I, I watch the show so much that sometimes I feel like I'm making it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then it was, okay so we 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 found that one for sure um josh you also man you, you directed the, the finale um and what a what a job what a job i mean this, you directed the last two finales right uh, three uh yeah john and hayden did uh seasons one and two i did three and four you did three and four so and what and that's usually the one that is the make or break thing because you want people talking about it and you want people going, Oh my God. And knowing that all the things that go down, let's start with the, with the tournament though, because making the changes to the tournament, which I thought was very smart of going through and bringing Aisha back and saying like, showing her though, by the way, inside of the, the one of the reasons where well, we can't have the guys fighting the girls anymore. We're going to get in trouble here. <laughs> yeah. so what, what was the, what was the, what was the choice to decide to go to make the, the two different tournaments? Oh my God, this was probably the biggest discussion of the whole season oh, uh, inside the writer's room was making sense of this tournament. One, one of the first things we decided was, you know, we we have to find all the ways of one-upping ourselves from season one. You know, we, we've done a tournament before. Yeah. Um, so you don't, and you know, in a tournament, it's very structured. You know, you're going to have your qualifiers, your prelims, your quarterfinals, your semifinals and your thing. So we, we wanted it to not just feel like, a sporting event where we know what's coming and we know what the third act is going to be. It's going to be the finals. Um, what are the things, what are the roadblocks, obstacles, embellishments, um, subversions that we can throw in there to, to change it? Um, and how can we kind of build the tournament into a, like a mini movie within the season by doing it over two episodes? 
Um, so the, the biggest thing was, okay, there's this, you know, bet on the table. Well, what does it mean to win the all Valley? You know, right. when that bet was made it, if there's one champion, um, what if there's two, two groups and we had that discussion, is it, you know, is it what, what's real? And, and we kind of looked into it and we, and we looked around to actual <laughs> 18 and under karate tournaments around the world and saw what they were doing. And there, there were both, there were mixed gender, but there was more, um, you know, women's tournaments and, and young men's tournaments. And we thought that would really enable us to show more of the, um, the interactions and uh, the clashes that we wanted to show. But then we were left with this problem that, okay, well, now there's only two. What if, you know, Miyagi-Do wins one and Cobra Kai wins the other, who's the champion? And that's right. where skills came from very organically um, because that also turned out to be something that's part of thing, um, yeah. a lot of karate tournaments, yeah. these kata um, competitions. So it, it we kind of accidentally backed ourselves into a corner of making this thing overly complex and then gradually came off that. There were earlier moments where we were talking about actually tracking scores and keeping track of the math. And we we decided to kind of like throw a lot of that away into like, you know, Devin's bringing Johnny up to date at one point and kind of doing a little bit of the math in her head as to, well, if we do this and he gets into this, we actually have a chance um, because we didn't want the audience to focus on, well, who's, who's ahead, what's happening. And you just kind of want to feel it. Right. Um, so with a lot of those, you know, kind of once we put some of those big things on the wall um, and obviously, you know, Carrie being, being another big piece of how yeah. can we have a, how'd that happen? How'd, how'd, that, how'd that come about by the way? <laughs> So she tweeted so, um, yeah. that she was enjoying season three. Um, and we were like, well, that's cool. And um, as we as we got into this whole idea of uh, of what the tournament looks like in uh, one year after Miguel um, won the tournament and the timeline of our show, it was the idea that this group of people who put on this tournament are feeling very self-important, feeling, you know, biting off more than they can chew and you know tr trying to reach for the stars we actually had uh in season two wanted to go uh get like a celebrity for valley fest for that yeah. episode yeah. um we were talking about um like you know local was, uh la it was dallas reigns um, dallas reigns yes. really we, wrote, we wrote we wrote we wrote dallas reigns into it and dallas <laughs> was unavailable know? he was he unavailable he, he did want to he was, do it he was oh. unavailable there Damn. was a family. It would, it, would have been like, it would have been like the big celebrity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, like, but, we wanted but, to like but, exist in that universe. My, where, like, my wife would have lost her mind. She loves Dallas. <laughs> yeah. But but we love but, that, yeah, no. that reach for the brass ring of like, you know, I bet we can get so and so. And 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 we wanted to present the idea that there's this like graveyard of like embarrassments of trying to get celebrities to show up to the to the All Valley tournament that not only won't it ever happen, but just even bringing it up everyone feels like they have egg on their face. So yeah. then we can go even bigger when Carrie shows up and, well, you know, that it Ron was this, pulled a it real coup. Yeah, it was, it was the surprise of that. And then it was, you know, I think for us, it, it, we we get caught up in the in the All Valley board, that group of characters in yeah. a way where we, where we get invested in them. So there was that. But beyond that, it was like, you know, in The Karate Kid, there's obviously the you're the best montage um and which is a legendary thing we didn't want to do the exact same thing but we love the idea of having a a, a throwback 80s song we had carrie underwood cover a song from yeah. the original karate kid film that's a little lesser known but fit with thematically with what we we're doing and carried over it and just sort of the shock of the that these characters were able to pull this off and we and we are those characters in a sense we're putting on our show and that, she had expressed thing. that like, she liked cobra kai she expressed that she liked cobra kai so we reached out and we're like okay we have this thing and she was like yes so does that mean that you reached out to andrew garfield <laughs> 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 we'll he's not he's not he's not part of the miyagi verse you can answer me that one <laughs> you can't answer anything you can't answer any of that all right well i mean because that that again makes sense to me because the guy obviously with everything going on with him this year in general i mean what, a, I, I, what i will say any celebrity that puts out there that they like cobra kai it's noted we appreciate it and and it's in the memory banks you know smart very smart why like why wouldn't you especially i mean not only is garfield like in a tremendous tremendous uh actor but he's like a he's like a mega fan of it so uh hopefully i mean uh, knowing you guys enough 
I can't wait to see him in the seasons. Um, <laughs> we'll see. All right, yeah. So let's uh, because I, I only got you to I only got you for a couple a couple more minutes. Um, so let's let, one more thing. I got to bring. I got to bring up Chosen. I mean, how do I not bring up Chosen coming back? Um, now with him coming back, was that? I guess it's it's kind of the same kind of repetitive question, but knowing that he was going to come back and the reveal of him and Danny working together, because man, I and it's something I want to repeat that I brought up to you guys last time we spoke was, and I just watched Karate Kid 2 with my daughter three nights ago. Um, it's always bizarre to me that Daniel just fought to the death and yet he comes back and he's scared of Mike Barnes. It makes no sense <laughs> to me. Um, but Chosen was just the way that as a young man, and we all know from, from what, when you, you, you change, you definitely can, you change and the essence of who you are is still there. But like there's things the way, the way that you perceive the world and Chosen, this guy was looking at honor in a very different way than like Miyagi and Sato were. Um, but he's changed and he's changed in, in age. And obviously him, he was sub subdued and he, he taught Daniel some stuff in the, in the Okinawa episode. So what is driving Chosen to mo basically move to the States to, uh, to, to do what he's doing here? I mean, I, I think that we kind of laid a little bit of this in, in season three. I mean, you, you know, you'll see more in five, but like he, I think, feels a sense of duty uh, and obligation because of how dishonorable like he was. Like, yeah. so he, I think he's in a constant state of like, I must redeem myself. And, and the main target of that is Daniel LaRusso. So I feel like if Daniel's calling him, um, you know, because I need help desperately. Um, I think he's thinking that's my ticket. Like he didn't cut, like Daniel didn't come in season three, come to Okinawa for him. Right. You know, they just kind of like went out for a walk and he taught him a few things, you know, um, but this is, you know, um, you know, I've just, you know, for chosen, you know, it's, you know, this is somebody that he clearly now has a little bit of amended relationship with. And I think this could be something that could, in his mind, atone for his sins, because you see in season three that, like, he's still affected by that as an adult. But it's not um, just about Daniel. I mean, I mean, it's also about the Miyagi-Do karate versus, yeah. you know, a toxic version of karate that's being, you know, taught and expanding and blowing up throughout the valley. So, yeah, and, and so obviously they're going to be teaming up we we'll see what's going on with johnny as he's now looking for miguel and um when it comes to season five now you guys have finished shoot finished shooting we finished okay, shooting, finished yes. shooting so and then are we looking at it uh, i don't know if if it's if it's not announced yet that's fine but are we looking at december same type of thing or not announced yet they haven't announced it yet okay. um okay. you know we okay. we have every reason to believe it probably will be but um but we leave it up to the that's cool. netflix scheduling um, and then any word yet? Has it been announced our, our season six or we're still same thing? Let's let's see how we do for season five. Hasn't been same announced thing. yet, um, but we are, you know, our story uh, we are writing beyond, five, but um, it has not been announced. Got it. Yeah. Is it to, um, before, the last question before I let you go? So when it comes to because you've done the switch now from or from YouTube to now Netflix picked up season three when it was shot for YouTube, I believe. Um, and yes. then four was specifically for Netflix. So what if I know that you had very positive experience working in, on the YouTube side of it, but now working with Netflix um, and being and having a successful show, a lot of freedom. How are you feeling being in the Netflix family? It, I mean, creatively, it's great. You know, it's first of all, there were some executives from YouTube that came over to Netflix to ease the transition. And then the That's new cool. Netflix execs that we've worked with have been, you know, they knew that the show had its own success and didn't want to. You know, screw with what was working, but like, you know, they are reading every script, watching everything, every episode, giving their feedback. And it's always been a good back and forth. So creatively, it's been great. The best part about Netflix is like, you know, marketing and the platform that they have, you know, at YouTube, we were always wanting to push our younger cast more um, and stuff like that. And Netflix has a lot more resources when it comes to, you know, getting the, the show out there. And that's been you know, it's just optimized. You know, they they know immediately what's working, what's not. I mean, YouTube did also. It just wasn't as you know robust of a platform. But I mean, Netflix can tweak just what icon you're seeing that draws you in as a first time viewer because they know you're more likely to click on you know something. Yeah. It's it's really remarkable. Um, just the the reach and and how they they pull in fans and how they kind of manage a fandom. Well, uh, listen, uh, a lot of congrats and. 
deserved success for you guys once again i always love talking to you about the show i always look forward to the show it's one of my most uh, anticipated shows every time i hear it's about to drop i get very excited and no one can find me because i'm watching the show so uh thank you again congratulations gentlemen i cannot wait for season five season four was a hit you should see i mean obviously you've seen it the fans are losing their minds over this thing and uh, as they should be so john Josh and Hayden, thank you so much for joining me once again. I can't wait to come back and see what I'm wrong about for season six. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> All right. We can't wait too. All right, everybody. So, guys, once again, please make sure you check out the guys. And if you're not watching season four, if you haven't seen season four, if you haven't seen season one, you're dead to me. No, but you should go actually go and check it out. Watch Cobra Kai. Check it out. And, yeah, I'll talk to you guys very soon. We'll see you guys on Monday. Peace out.